Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day six, no, day 17 of the Lico Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this farm. And I'm on this page today, and there is a button that I just clicked to give me 10 coins. So hopefully, you get that too. Also, uh, I've, been, I've, I've been meaning to say this the last couple of days, but I forgot it uh, just because uh, I don't know, I don't remember it. Uh, but yeah, uh, hit 15,000 uh, subscribers, is it followers, subscribe, whatever they call it on YouTube. So definitely thanks for all of y'all watching, especially if you're watching the video now. Um, <clears throat> uh, I put in the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the, the, the drone video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the drone video. Uh, yeah, uh, I went to Coney Island, I got a new drone. Uh, Maybe I'll, eh, I was maybe I'll show it another day. It's very heavy, so I don't know. What, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. We'll see what happens. It's kind of expensive. I might return it. We'll see. Uh, anyway, that that's enough with updates. Wow, it's already Wednesday, isn't it, or Thursday? Uh, yeah, hope everyone's having a great week. Uh, I'm hearing a little bit on my leg as well, so hopefully I can uh, start jogging at least. Uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, let's go. Let's do today's farm. Today's farm is five forty two. Zero one matrix. So you have a M by N matrix binary. Return the distance of the nearest zero for each one each cell. The distance between two adjacent cells is one. Okay, so the nearest zero for each cell. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh I mean I think this one the, the key thing about these problems in general. Um you know, I mean, do you know, play around with them, uh, kind of see how, how it is. Um the idea here is that the the quote unquote the naive solution of of for each cell calculate the nearest zero well we just kind of do like arbitrary math um or not arbitrary but like off the of your hand uh, back of the envelope or back of your hand math or whatever uh it's gonna be like n squared where n is the uh n is the number of cells not the input right um so <clears throat> So you have to be a little bit careful, but also honestly, to be honest, uh, wait, especially at the at the lead code level, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Someone could give me an example. Um, but very often, the, the way to think about it, just thinking about it backwards in some way, um, or maybe even meet in the middle in some way. But you know, uh, but these are the things that I would consider. Right? Um, I think meeting in the middle could be interesting. I mean, not necessarily for this problem, but in general, then you can kind of uh, limit your your uh thing kind of you know your your branching factors and stuff like this but uh but yeah um really those are like the very basic things that you can think about so and in this case i think thinking about it backwards works which is now for each zero uh figure out the you know how how far they are from or yeah just st start not even maybe that's another way of saying it but starting at each zero that distance zero right and then now you look almost like uh the way i like to think about it's like a frontier type thing right where you can kind of draw the almost like a like a almost like a virus graph or viral graph or whatever where like you know the disease spreads or whatever you know uh so you have this idea of a frontier and then for each uh unit time or each unit distance or whatever it is um you know you just expand it by one and then keep on going on and on right uh way and of course with that visualization is a very basic uh bfs but for search uh shortest path type thing and then you kind of just visualize it out all right so let, let's get started then um it is going to be just you know breath first search so and we can actually even use the res uh this thing as the answer um we can start by infinity right times e, do, 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 right um and then now 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 for x in do, 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 for y in range of c uh if x y is equal to zero then the distance to the zeros is going to be zero and then we also want to unqueue x y right and you could write this in a, a number of ways but uh but yeah i guess we already did the distance but yeah okay fine uh, Q type. Um, I guess that's it, really. I mean, you, there, there, are, there are a number of variations you can write it. It doesn't really matter as long as, uh, as long as <coughs> you have all the information that you need, right? It doesn't matter where it, it comes from. Uh, yeah. So this is equal to Q dot pop left, 
right? This is the DQ. Of course, I'm just a little bit lazy to kind of write the DQ function. Yeah, I think even then Q is a little bit maybe unnecessary now that I think about it or look at it. Uh, where was that the thing that I was going to do? Oh, yeah, directions. That's right. Uh, and then in this case, there's only the four cardinal directions. So up, down, left, right. Not in the order that I'm typing it. Uh, but... Yeah, and then basically, yeah, uh, for dx, dy, and directions, uh, new x, new y is equal to x plus dx, y plus dy. Uh, we have to make sure that they're within bound. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. And also that we haven't seen them before, so distance of nx and y is equal to infinity. And in that case, we set it to this plus 1. And we unqueue it. I guess I could have put it in the queue. I don't know. Like I said, it, it doesn't really matter that much. And then now at the very end, we return distance. Um, yeah, it should be okay. Let's see. Let's give it a spin. Hopefully, I didn't miss an edge case. Yes. Ah, oh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> uh, for day streak, I guess that's a funky number. Uh, yeah. Um, what is there to say about this one? I mean, this is linear time, linear space. Keeping in mind that R times C or M times N or whatever it is, is the linear part, right? The size of the input is R times C. So for each cell, we use one space or over one space and over one time. Uh, yeah, don't really have much to say about this one. This is pretty standard, pretty basic. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, for problems like this, if you are, you know, getting to a point where you're comfortable with it, and I hope that you're getting there, um, definitely, you know, start timing yourself and then challenge yourself to be like, you know, just solve, you know, just kind of uh, have different metrics of success, right? Uh, what I mean by that is that, you know, maybe for a long time, for you, a metric of success, uh, a metric of success is uh, binary, right? Whether you solve it or you don't solve it. But at a certain point, you want to solve it, you know, as quickly as possible and maybe even to explain it as cleanly as possible, be uh, recording yourself, just talk to yourself or whatever. Um, maybe not talk to yourself, but explain it in a way such that you can watch it back and understand it. Um, remember, all those parts are part of the interview as well. If you're do doing this for an interview, it's not, I mean, the code, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're really good and you're really clean, the code is very clean, it speaks for yourself. But, you know, uh, it's very weird that you, that, um, you know, over communicating is very rare, and I definitely, you know, uh, would err on the side of doing that instead of under, under communicating uh, and assuming that uh, the interviewer can read your mind, right? Uh, I don't really have much to say about this one. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. Uh, thanks for the follow. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye bye. Huh?